aviation safety has always been data-driven and risk-based to a certain extent. For example, we take into account um, data from a past experience in order to make new regulations through a cost-benefit analysis. But in today's uh, context, the discussion on data-driven risk-based approach uh, arises from several uh, issues. In a nutshell, um, a data-driven risk-based approach is a way for us to use data in a quantitative way uh, to identify areas of greater safety risk so it can put in place the relevant uh, mitigating measures to minimise the risk of an accident or serious incident. Risks are a part of living. Every day we manage multiple risks in our environment. We actively seek out, collect, share, and use data to identify potential hazards, and then take systematic actions to mitigate those risks. An important part of risk-based data-driven decisions is the application of the safety continuum. Being able to proactively flag potential issues before they become realized and acting upon them to prevent accidents from occurring is an important aspect of our safety approach. Well, it depends on the type of risk. So as a state, we are interested in the risks that um, affect the entire state or cut across sectors or affect the uh, entire sector. And for this, we have to work uh, collaboratively and very closely with industry uh, to get data from them, uh, to interface closely with their safety management systems so that we have the information that we need for analysis at the state level. Sometimes, we also need information at the regional level. Uh, for example, uh, data from different ANSPs and, and carriers would be uh, uh, useful uh, for us for further analysis. And to this end, uh, CS and other states in the Asia-Pacific region have worked closely with MITRE to do safety risk assessment uh, at the regional level. We also are interested in risks at the organisational level and we use what is called an organisational risk profile to do this. We look at severity and likelihood. Severity is based on the seriousness of the outcome and the likelihood is how often that outcome could occur. To assess risk, we look at factors such as product type, complexity, and exposure to the public. For example, the personal risk of skydiving is much higher than being a passenger on an airliner. However, data indicates that society expects the safety regulator to spend more of its time and energy on the safety of the airline operations due to the severity of the potential outcome. To enable this, we encourage a positive safety culture that promotes transparent reporting and data sharing. We use this data to proactively address risks. COVID-19 really presented a challenge. The impact was sudden, it was unprecedented, and it was prolonged. Data was quite scarce in the early days, uh, due to, also due to the plunge in traffic. And I believe that in this environment, the safety culture that we have built over the years really came in and served us well in identifying and mitigating the risks. So regulators and industry came together, uh, exchanged uh, information, uh, shared experiences, and I think this really contributed to a wealth of knowledge uh, that helped us deal with this uh, COVID risk in a very short amount of time. Uh, from CS perspective, we looked at our state safety program, adjusted our safety risks and put in place new safety performance indicators to track uh, this risk and uh, we are continuing to mitigate and, and monitor the implementation of those measures. You know, in summary, I think it's important uh, more than ever that we take a data-driven risk-based approach to, more, to identify our risks in a more structured manner uh, and be able to um, put our resources uh, where they are needed most. We can use risk-based decision-making in a lot of ways. In fact, we've already applied it in response to challenges from the COVID-19 pandemic. We consulted our medical experts to help us identify medical risks to aircraft operation and the protection of our personnel. We evaluated antibacterial cleaning fluids to ensure passenger safety without compromising the aircraft systems. We enabled the transportation of critical medical supplies by issuing an exemption to cargo regulations. 
We used risk-based decision-making in our certification and oversight activities to decide when to conduct virtual evaluations. We also increased our engagement with our international partners through the use of virtual tools. This includes our participation in the ICAO Council Aviation Response Task Force and the recent ICAO High-Level Conference on COVID.